Hello dear friend, in this video you will learn about the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius Gemini on the 26th of May 2021. We will start with the general interpretation of a lunar eclipse, what is so special about it, what we should do, which are the most beneficial activities and generally what we need to focus on. Then I will show you the actual chart of this lunar eclipse so that we can discuss the different aspects and how all of the other planets are part of this. And actually, we will be able to understand more about the energy of this lunar eclipse. And after that, we are going to do a short prediction for each zodiac sign and you will know how this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius Gemini will affect your sun and rising sign. First, what is a lunar eclipse? A lunar eclipse is a full moon which also triggers the lunar nodes. A full moon is an opposition between the sun and the moon. It's a regular event, approximately once a month we have one of those. But a couple of times during the year, we also have the lunar nodes included. And that makes those lunar eclipses much more important. They may have a stronger impact on your life. And also it may continue for a much longer time. The influence may last between six months and three years. So it's very important to check if this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius Gemini is actually triggering important parts of your chart. For example, if you, ha if you have your sun or rising sign or any other planet in Sagittarius and Gemini, this will be an important lunar eclipse for you. And of course, there are more details which we will discuss at the end of this video. So, what are the lunar nodes? Those are two points which are not actual objects like the planets, but they have a very special meaning in astrology. From a karmic perspective, this is one of the most important indications. And if we understand better what's our lesson or what we should do, it's much easier. It's kind of like going with the flow. So the South Node is related to the past. It shows area of life where we need to transform something or we need to let go of something. We need to separate with something. And um, it doesn't mean that you should let go of something which is valuable and meaningful in your life. It's more about the things that you've been holding to which are no longer needed in your life the things that it's time to let go of. So it's a great time actually to release certain energy. So the South Node is this point which shows what we can release, where we can experience more freedom, where we may need to give up on something. And the North Node is always in the opposite position of the South Node. And this is the one which shows where is our growth, where we can gain something, where we can succeed, where we may have more abundance. And this is, of course, the future direction for us. So by concentrating on the North Node, we can grow, we can expand, we can succeed more. In this case, it's important to pay attention which of those planets which of the luminaries are triggering the south and the north node in this particular lunar eclipse the moon is together with the south node and the sun is together with the north node generally the moon in a lunar eclipse or even during a full moon also shows area where we can change something, where we can transform something, where we may need to be more adaptable and more flexible. 
And the moon is also very important when it comes to our subconscious, when it comes to the past or processing emotions. And in this lunar eclipse, when the moon is together with the south node in Sagittarius, we may need to let go of something which is affecting our subconscious mind. Those could be negative memories, those could be traumatic events, those could be also some kind of personal beliefs that are no longer serving you. So separating also from something on an emotional level, that's what this lunar eclipse will really support. And the North Node being together with the Sun in Gemini suggests that this lunar eclipse can be great for increasing our awareness, for bringing more of our conscious attention, for opening up for the truth, allowing yourself to see things from a different perspective. Another interesting point of view is that the moon represents the closest environment around us and also the way we relate to this environment. On the other side, the sun is related to our individuality, our creativity, our self-expression. And from that perspective, the lunar eclipse and the moon triggering the south node suggests that we need to stop paying so much attention on the environment around us. It may mean stop caring what other people will say or stop being afraid that you might be judged or stop being afraid that you might be different than other people and instead focus on expressing your true self, expressing who you truly are, being more transparent and more open. And that's a very beneficial combination in my opinion. This lunar eclipse can really help us to detach from the desire of being liked or being accepted and instead to realign with who we truly are, to accept ourselves for who we truly are and to be willing to do the best that we can independently on our own. And of course that always should be done in a loving way so I'm not saying that you should hurt other people or you shouldn't care about their feelings or you should do something wrong absolutely not I'm always assuming that everything you want to do is coming from a loving place with good intentions but you also need to learn to put yourself first and I think that this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius Gemini can really help us to let go of the expectations of other people and to this idea that you always need to be kind of easy for others and instead focus on what you really want to do and expressing your full potential. So this lunar eclipse can really help in this direction to bring more conscious awareness and also to detach from opinions and beliefs that you have kind of like adopted from the environment. The axis of signs which are triggered is also very important and we have Sagittarius and Gemini triggered by the lunar eclipse. So of course the energies of those two zodiac signs will be very important and this axis is first of all related to the thinking process. Sagittarius represents the philosophical mind and Gemini represents the practical concrete analytical mind. With this combination when south node is in Sagittarius we shouldn't focus so much on philosophical concepts and perspectives. Instead, we should concentrate more on the Gemini energy, which means being practical, being concrete, 
being analytical, paying attention to the details. And also one very important lesson that Gemini teaches us is to be present, to be here and now and paying attention on everything that happens to you and being present and from that point of view adapting your projects or tasks or work or whatever you want to focus on. We tend to sometimes leave too much in the future expecting when something will be better we will be happier whatever something in the future and that's not what we should focus on right now instead we should focus on being present and getting in touch with reality and looking at things from this practical concrete perspective that Gemini can And this can really allow us also to learn to express our ideas, our own personal ideas, our thoughts. This can also be very helpful if you want to verbally express yourself or if you want to write or if you have a message for the world, if you want to write a book or you want to learn something, it's a great time. But When it comes to learning, focus on being precise, focus on learning the smaller things and that will help you of course later to do the best that you can with your knowledge. So this lunar eclipse really brings the focus to Gemini as an energy and it's so important to focus on the rational mind and allow it to guide us. If we take a look at the actual chart of this lunar eclipse, we will see that first of all, there are six planets in mutable signs. We know that we have three modalities, cardinal, fixed and mutable. And six of the planets are currently triggering the mutable signs. The mutable signs are related to the mind. They are the ones that bring the focus to the mind from a different perspective, of course. Each of those mutable signs may trigger different ability that our mind has. But the most important here is that the mind is very active. So whatever you do, you need to analyze it. You need to focus and allow actually your mind to be creative. So process all of your ideas, write them down, explore them. This is a really creative time. And also this uh, lunar eclipse can really bring the focus on finding what the best solution is because the mutable science also has this as a potential to find what the best solution or outcome or decision would be. Also, it's interesting that the rulers of this lunar eclipse are both really strong. We have the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius in Gemini, which means that Jupiter and Mercury are the two rulers. Jupiter as a ruler of Sagittarius and the moon is actually in Pisces and Mercury as a ruler of the sun and the north node is in Gemini. So both of the planets are very, very strong and that's helpful. That means that we can be more resourceful, that our mind can really guide us, that we can really bring our full potential. Again, the main focus of the lunar eclipse is ideas, letting go of beliefs that you don't need, letting go of your attachment to the closest environment and opinions of other people and all of that, and instead realigning with your own ideas. But that's a pretty interesting fact. So I can't remember when was the last time when we had the two rulers of a lunar eclipse or a full moon being both so strong. 
And actually, it's pretty new for us, for Jupiter to be in Pisces. So I think that new opportunities are really coming for us in the future. But before they come, first we need to clear the space. We need to open some space if we want something new to show up. And that's what the role of the moon and the south node in this lunar eclipse play. So pay special attention to the exact position of the moon in your own chart. And you will learn about that in a moment. Now, let's take a look at the actual aspects that we have, which are triggering the lunar eclipse. Uh, first interesting fact is that Jupiter, the ruler of the moon in this situation, squares the lunar eclipse, squares both the sun and the moon. And this means that we need to change our philosophy that we need to look at things from a different perspective. We need to revisit our goals. And it's totally fine to change your goals. Actually, being flexible and adaptable is a great quality. And this lunar eclipse really helps with this adaptation and flexibility, especially when it comes to the mind. So revisit your own goals, your own visions, your own beliefs, don't be afraid to make changes. And if there is a frustration, that's also something positive, because frustration is an indication that you need to change something. And it's also bringing you some energy. So don't get too bothered by that. Actually try to use this frustration to make the necessary changes. Also, interesting fact that Saturn has a trine with the sun. Now, the, the orbis is a little too large, but I would still include this. So this can be a very productive combination because Saturn can bring so much logic. Saturn can really help us to be practical, to be consistent. And um, it's very important for this uh, full moon and lunar eclipse because Jupiter squares the eclipse, which means that Jupiter's strategies are not the best right now. So we shouldn't exaggerate. We shouldn't overestimate. We shouldn't put too much on our plate. And instead, we should focus on the Saturn energy, which means being practical, being also mm, having some kind of healthy skepticism, I would say, and being realistic. So it's better to focus on one thing or just a few important things and dig deeper instead of losing your focus into too many directions. Because Gemini as a sign sometimes may do this sometimes can you know like bring too many ideas and too many desires and we can be so curious into learning new things and at the end of the day it's a mess but with saturn's help we can have better concentration we can be more logical more concrete and we may focus on few things but we will do them right so saturn truly helps the mind in this uh, eclipse situation. Another planet which also has a trine is Pluto. Pluto has another trine with the sun again. The Orbis is a little large and it's out of science, but let's consider this as also uh, being a helpful resource. Pluto can help with concentration with bringing more passion, with bringing more dedication, being more focused and engaged with whatever you are doing. Also, Pluto really supports big transformations, especially when it comes to the inner expression, the inner self. And um, Pluto training the sun can also really empower us. So if you need more power, more strength, more dedication, this is a truly helpful resource. 
Mars has a minor challenging aspect with the lunar eclipse, which means that we might be a little impatient, we might be a little bit anxious to achieve something and impatient. That's fine, as long as we use it in a constructive way, which would mean taking some action, that's still helpful. But keep in mind that you may get frustrated when it comes to expression and also how other people react to your ideas. Let's see, another aspect, and actually that's the last one, is a creative aspect between Neptune and the lunar eclipse. Neptune is also in Pisces, in a mutable sign, so we have even more of this mutable energy. And Neptune can be so creative and inspirational. It can truly help us to listen to our deeper truth. It can help us with healing, with imagination, with creativity. So use this Neptune energy when it comes to transforming your ideas or beliefs. And also for creative projects, which include learning or writing or self-expression, this can be an especially positive combination. And one of the last things I want to say about this particular chart is that the dominant element is also the air. The air is the element of communication and also making connections and associations. And it's a great time also to open up and communicate with different people. Find some important connections or start new friendships or work on some kind of intellectual project. That's one of the best things we can do. And now let's talk about each of the signs and discuss how this lunar eclipse and Sagittarius and Gemini will affect you. If your sun or rising sign is in Aries, the houses which will be triggered are 9th and 10th house. And the moon and the south node will trigger your 9th house, which means that you need to let go of some kind of beliefs or too much focus on the future or being detached from the present and instead focus on being present, being concrete, learning some practical concrete skills, creating some friendship or connections with other people. That's the main area of growth for you. Connections, practical skills, it may help with some document situations, resolving them. But again, first, you need to work with the ninth house situations. So letting go of those potentially negative beliefs or beliefs that are coming from other people and focusing on being more present. For Taurus, this lunar eclipse will trigger eighth and second house. And it means that you need to be less attached to the invisible world, less attached to your own fears and irrational beliefs, less dependent on other people financially, when it comes to resources, when it comes to any type of emotional dependence as well. And instead, you should focus on connecting with the material reality, connecting with your own foundation, finding your own stability in life. That includes financial security, all kinds of material resources and practical results. For Gemini, of course, this lunar eclipse is extremely important. It triggers your seventh and first house which means that you need to stop paying so much attention on other people's opinion 
maybe you need to let go of certain relationship or dependence on or on another person and instead you should concentrate more on yourself your own ideas your own projects your own desires everything that you want to do so it's a really really important time for gemini and it can be time for also personal growth so please gemini don't waste this time and this energy for cancer the lunar eclipse triggers sixth and twelfth house which means that you need to be less attached to practical things and obligations and demands that other people may have or overwhelming yourself with too much work and instead you should focus on your inner self your deepest desires your own psyche your own imagination taking a, a rest taking care of yourself and it's a great time for some kind of retreat or spiritual practice or more meditations because your deeper truth will be revealed to you when you are on your own in silence and peace so don't spend too much time on the outer world chasing some kind of you know concrete tasks instead go more internal give yourself some time to process things to look deeper into yourself it's an incredible time for spiritual awareness and growth for Leo, this lunar eclipse will trigger 5th and 11th house. You need to let go of something which you might be extremely attached to. It could be something that you consider that you really love or it might be about some kind of romantic connection or anything else that's kind of unhealthy and you're still too attached to it. And instead give yourself more freedom allow yourself to connect with other people on a friendship level so it could be a great time also to focus on your ideals the things that are truly important when it comes to your beliefs your ideas the things that are your biggest priorities for Virgo, this lunar eclipse triggers 4th and 10th house. It's a pretty important position and what you may need to let go of is too much attachment to your privacy, to your personal life, maybe even to your family and instead focus on your truest desires when it comes to your career, or the work that you were born to do your vocation maybe you want to start a business or anything else that will allow you to present yourself and your ideas in front of others so if the closest environment around you or your family isn't supportive that should not stop you you should concentrate on expressing your deepest potential for Libra, the lunar eclipse triggers third and ninth house. You need to detach a little bit from opinions of friends or too much socialization with them or wasting too much time on social media. And instead, you should focus more on your dreams, your deepest desires, the things that you want to learn how you want to expand your mind and your vision what's the message you want to share with other people is there something that you want to teach other people is there something that you want to explore more when it comes to beliefs or religion or something spiritual it's a great time for education for visualizing the things that you want for yourself that may include traveling and anything else that will help you to feel inspired it's really about expressing your deepest inspiration in a creative way 
For Scorpio, the lunar eclipse triggers second and eighth house, which means that you need to detach a little bit from the material reality. Attachment to possessions, material belongings, money, that should not be your main priority. Instead, you should focus more on connecting energetically with the world, with other people, with even when it comes to some kind of financial goals, it should be through connecting with others. So a great time to explore investments or from a spiritual perspective, some kind of energy practices and balancing your own energy. Also, a big lesson here for Scorpio is learning to receive and give simultaneously. So if we focus too much on one of those, it's a problem. So learning to allow the energy to flow, it's a great time to actually do it right now. For Sagittarius, the lunar eclipse is especially important. It triggers your first and seventh house. And it means that you should concentrate more on connecting with someone and expressing your ideas in front of other people. It could be an audience, it could be clients, friends, your spouse, but you need to share your message. You, it shouldn't be only for yourself. And there might be some kind of personal transformations that you need to do. If there are some kind of negative beliefs you have about yourself or anything else that's holding you back, it could be self-judgment, it could be ideas about yourself which you have kind of gathered from other people, now you can release all of that. And instead of aligning with the environment, you should step up and be spontaneous and express your ideas in front of others. So finding the balance in relationships and learning to express yourself there creatively, independently, maybe learning to put yourself first, learning to value yourself more, that's all pretty important. For Capricorn, the lunar eclipse triggers 12th and 6th house. And you may need to detach a little bit from the world of dreams and invisible things and all of those um, untangible things and instead concentrate on the practical tasks. How you can improve your life consciously by taking some conscious steps and also how you can serve other people, how you can serve yourself, the world, the people that you love, what kind of work projects you want to focus on. All of those tasks will be very important for you. And also for Capricorn, it's a great time to concentrate on health, taking some conscious steps in order to improve your own health. For Aquarius, this lunar eclipse will trigger 11th and 5th house. And you may need to let go of something when it comes to beliefs that other people have, opinions that other people have. And instead, you can concentrate more on your individuality, on your own creativity and doing the things that you truly love. So it's a pretty intense and also um, potentially very enthusiastic period. And for Pisces, this, uh, this lunar eclipse will trigger 10th and 4th house. And what you need to let go of is perhaps you, if you are too focused on your career or your reputation or status or other formalities. You shouldn't prioritize that too much. Instead, you should focus more on your personal life, on your family, on your home, and also to reconnect with the people that you truly love. So personal life is 
a big priority for Pisces. So with that, we covered the most important life areas which will be triggered for each zodiac sign by this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius and Gemini. Remember, open your mind, express who you truly are, and be brave. That's the most important for this lunar eclipse. If you want to learn more about karmic astrology, you can check my course on karmic astrology. There are also other courses that you can find. And remember to subscribe for our weekly email updates. You can go to marstars.net and sign up there. And of course, there are different types of personal readings available, consultations and many other personal services. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon.